Hello everyone, and thank you for watching the talk. Let me start with a very simple question. Did you enjoy a good cup of coffee today? I actually can't see anyone because this is a, an online talk, but I will just assume that most of you have. And more than an assumption, I do believe it is a reality. Why? Because here in Belgium, we drink 19.5 million cups of coffee. That is a day. 19.5 million. On average, it means 1.5 coffees for every grown-up. So chances are high that you had one. And I have to admit that my contribution to this daily consumption is above average. I drink a lot of coffee. And not because it's written in my contract that I should. Simply because I love coffee. And I love as much the hard work behind a good, a good cup of coffee. Now, thinking about moments of consumption of drinking coffee, it is very often linked with other activities or specific moments. Reading the newspaper with the paper in one hand, the coffee in the other. Getting up in the morning, being energized, getting us through the day. Sharing a cup of coffee with friends and family. Soon, I hope. And the end of a very good meal. Having a, watching a TED talk about the future of coffee. It is moments that don't feel complete without. They feel incomplete without coffee. For me, it's for example reading and scrolling through different media. So in many cases, coffee is part of our daily routine. Okay, so a lot of people love drinking coffee. By the way, did you know that green coffee is next to oil the second most traded commodity in the world. And quality coffee, the demand for quality coffee is growing year after year on a, on a global scale. But let me ask you a second question. Do you know where it came from? You probably remember where you got it or where you prepared it. In normal times, I would say it would be a coffee shop, a bar on the go, or you have slipped a capsule in the coffee machine in the office. Most of the time nowadays, it's probably prepared at home. But that's not exactly what I mean. Have you ever asked yourself where in the world that cup of coffee came from? Or more importantly, who's behind it? It's not me, nor a famous actor. No, we can't take the credit for that. The coffee beans to prepare your coffee comes from hardworking farmers in Brazil, Vietnam, Colombia, Indonesia, or Ethiopia, Ethiopia, just to name few of the countries. Actually, most countries close to the equator. Take Brazil, for instance. Brazil is the highest producing coffee uh, country in the world, with 58 millions of bags each year and 300,000 coffee farms. And for all the people working in those farms, that coffee is so important, so valuable. Not because it tastes great, or you can make a lovely cappuccino or a delicious uh, cafe latte. Not because it has more than 900 flavored notes, more than wine, actually. No, it's because for those Brazilian farmers, and for all farmers, coffee farmers in the world, coffee is a matter of survival. Their lives depend on it. Entire families and communities depend on it to survive. And that's something we tend to forget because it's so far away from our daily reality. Is it? The thing is, it's not really. It is very close to our daily coffee routine, because the future of those farmers is in real danger. The entire future of coffee is at stake, which means so is our cup in the morning. So what is threatening this cup of coffee in the morning? Three things. Climate change, economic hardship, and wars. And according to experts from the NGO Fairtrade, by 2050, half of the land that is currently used to grow coffee will become unusual because of those three threats. Okay, wait. Let's try something for a second. Close your eyes. Try to picture the place where your coffee beans come from. Are you in Brazil? Or in Indonesia, perhaps? Are you seeing a coffee tree? Maybe a farmer with dirt on their pants? Working hard on a field? 
Where does he live or they live? What does they eat? It is hard to imagine, right? Now open your eyes again. It is sometimes hard to imagine because most of us haven't been there. While we drink our cup of coffee, we rarely think about where our coffee comes from and who's behind this cup. And even if we do, we often fail to know or to recognize the challenges that these farmers and communities are facing. When I was visiting some of those farms we work with back in Costa Rica, I got to see the way they work and live at first hand. The conditions are very tough. And even despite the hard work they do, the harvest is always at risk by unpredict unpredictable events. Now let's go back to the three threats. Climate change, economic hardship and wars. Remember that storm that hit Belgium, I think it was in 2011, 10 years ago? The one with the hail the size of golf balls, the storm that hit Pickelbub and even we had some casualties? That was heavy, right? Well, even if you don't remember, you can think of at least one situation where the weather was quite extreme. Now think about what happens to the coffee farms when a powerful storm hits the region, or drought, or heavy rains leading to landslides, or when temperatures drop or rise so much that they cause plagues, pests and diseases, and can destroy their entire crops. That Arabica coffee you love so much, it's facing ex extinction because of this. 60% of coffee species are threatened with extinction because of climate change. And with it, so are the farmers that grow them. Global warming is forcing coffee farmers to plant even higher, which reduces the amount of available land significantly. And the higher you get, the less land you can cultivate, which means less farmers put to work. Farmers that count on coffee as their source of income to live, to provide to their families. The future of those coffee farmers is in jeopardy, and with it, the future of coffee. I think it's clear we cannot let that happen. Me, you, the entire coffee industry, with every zip of coffee, we enjoy the fruits of the hard work of coffee farmers. So it's only fair, or better, it's our responsibility to do everything in our power to support the millions of coffee farmers that rely on it. I firmly believe that the industry has that kind of power, the power to turn things around, to have a positive impact and preserve the future of farmer and the future of coffee. Take Kenya, for example, an East African country renowned for their specialty gourmet coffee. But most of the farms are relatively small and returns tend to be low. So those Kenyan coffee farmers are often running out of food and money in between harvests. And the economic conditions are hard and climate change hasn't made their life easier neither. So what can be concretely done to support them? Well, actually, we can provide them with training to help them improve their productivity and quality of products, to generate more revenue and to have them pay the premium price for the quality of their products but also provide them with technical assistance to help them assure sustainable practices on their farms and surrounding environment. Because creating biodiversity in their lands will stabilize the soil to prevent landslides and can generate additional revenues, like for example with banana trees. And as such ensure that the farmers have a decent income and we can improve their living uh, conditions. Countries that produce coffee are very often in a fragile state. Not just because of climate change, not, because, not only because of economical difficult situations. Wars and conflicts have huge impact too. And it is essential to address those issues. But we're in the coffee industry. We're not in politics, are we? So what can we do to support them? Let me tell you about Caquete in Colombia. There, coffee farmers were driven away from their land due to an internal conflict that lasts for 50 years. The coffee production in that region almost disappeared because of it.
But when a peace agreement was signed in the land in 2016, there was a time to help the Colombian farmers to slowly restore their local economy. And thanks to this program, farmers received support to rebuild infrastructure and equipment in their regions. With this support, they were able to complement their traditional techniques with sustainable practices. And Colombia is not the only country where that happened. There's other examples in Uganda, South Sudan. The thing is, I could go on for hours talking about coffee regions and coffee farmers and many different stories. There's one occasion, though, that moved me more than any other, that made me realize the importance of those farmers, these people behind the cup. Back then I was working in Switzerland and we decided to invite some of those farmers we worked to travel the journey of their coffee bees, often leaving their country for the first time. So they could see what happened to their coffee beans after they leave the farm. How their coffee is processed, how their coffee is roasted, how their coffee is packaged and in the end eventually sold to, their, to our consumers. In the end, they met as well hundreds of our uh, colleagues in the headquarters. And we were so eager and so proud to tell them about the way we work and what we do to take care of their coffee beans. We really connected with them. Because in some way we knew we were on the same side and we needed each other. And welcoming and meeting those farmers was a bigger honor for me than welcoming any other person in my professional life I ever did. Now, what I've been trying to tell you in the last 10 minutes is that the future of those coffee farmers is in real danger. Climate change, economical hardship and conflicts jeopardize the entire future of coffee. We need to realize this. That's the first step. The second one is being aware of the journey your coffee made to get here. Be aware of the orig origins of your coffee. Be critical of what you consume and make a deliberate choice. Admit, it's not an easy choice. But if you like drinking coffee, it is your responsibility to look at that cup of coffee and think about the people behind it. Are we ready to have coffee for the future? Yes, we are. As long, and that is if the entire coffee industry chooses to do the right things and make the right choices. <laughs>